Okay, in this video, let's go ahead and UV our low poly helmet. So to do the UVs, first let's go ahead and combine the entire object into one shape. Right now, as you could see, it's consists of multiple shapes. But let's go ahead and combine it by clicking on this button here. All right, so now it's one shape. I'm also going to uh, clear my history for this shape. Okay, so it's nice and clean. And might as well also center our pivot before we move forward. Next, I'm going to select my object and click on this button here called UV Editor. Okay, you could see the current UVs for our helmet. If your background image is on, you can uh, feel free to turn it off. It's just going to be the color, the gray color that is currently set for our default material. So at this point, uh, one of the things we could do to um, have something prettier to look at than this uh, mess is to project our helmet from the side. So if, I'm look if I look right here, I could project it from the X. So to do that, I'm actually just going to go to Planar, UVs, and from the X, I'm just going to say Apply. All right, so now this is going to be a much better... Uh, image to look at as we unwrap our helmet. So to begin, let's start with uh, maybe the bottom part here, right? So I'm going to grab, if I go to my face mode, I can actually just double click and select all of these faces. All right. And actually, a better way to do it is actually, let's just do this one part at a time. So for example, if we select all of these inner pieces first, right, so just the inside part, we can project it from the side. So let's get go ahead and just project it from the X. And let's unfold it. Alright, so we have this really nice, if I zoom out, I can move these aside and see that I have this really nice clean UVs uh, kind of laid out. All right, which is perfect. And the reason they are able to unfold beautifully is because when we uh, created our circle, we actually never connected the vertex points. So that w that is why we're able to uh, cleanly unwrap, unfold these UVs. To show you what I mean, if I go to object mode, select my shape and just press three, you could see that by smoothing the shape, it shows us exactly where the shape is not connected, which is not a problem um, since this is just a low poly um, shape, right? We don't really need to connect it. There's no point. If we wanted to, we can, of course, um, select. If you did want to connect, you just select all the points and go to Edit Mesh and just do a merge, right? So I'll sh if you go into Options, um, if you leave the threshold at 0.01 and just say merge, that will actually connect all the shapes. But that will actually not be that great for me at this point because I want my UVs to be unfolding in, in this way. So this is actually works out to my advantage that they're not connected. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing to this kind of outer rim. I'm just going to manually select all of these outer edges, just holding down the shift key and just clicking around. Alt to rotate. All right, and then let's um, jump back into our planer once again and do another apply and do unfold. I'm just going to move them aside as well. All right, so now we've got the inside and the outside um, UV. Let's go ahead and do the top, maybe the top and the bottom. If I just double click, it actually selects both of them. So let's do that from the top. So looking at the top, that's going to be Y. I'm going to press on Y and just say apply. All right, let's move them to the side. And that's let, let's go ahead and grab um, all of these kind of circles here. So I'm just going to grab all of these guys. Let's just pr press um, unfold, and that kind of gives us all of them individually. That's exactly what 
we want this way in Photoshop, um, we can actually just simply paint them, right? That works. Next, uh, let's maybe do the top of the helmet. So I'm going to go to face and if I just double click on my face here, on my object, it's going to select this entire mesh that that is not actually um, merged with anything, right? They're combined, but they're still separate shapes. And if we wanted to look at this uh, separately without all these other pieces, we can always click on isolate and take a kind of a take a, a better look. Now to unwrap this, what I would like to do is actually set click on this outer polygons and just keep going in the circle here and maybe select all of these manually just like that. So essentially I just selected the outer shell but not the, the not the uh, inside one, right? So for the outer one I, wanna, I would like to project it from the top. So again just on Y I'm just going to project it right from the top and maybe go ahead and unfold it. Okay, so this is sort of the top outer part of the helmet. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and grab all the middle pieces. So to grab the middle pieces, we could just grab our shell move tool and just move this piece down, right click on it, go to select, and do convert selection to faces. That kind of automatically selects everything that we have not yet used. And the same thing, let's project it from the top and unfold. All right, so this is kind of the middle piece. So as you can see, uh, piece by piece, we're just moving right along. Next, we have these horns. And to see them actually in our viewport, let's go ahead and click our isolate button to kind of reveal the entire shape. So for the horns, I would like to actually, let's grab, um, Let's just grab all of these guys, right? Because this is going to be. And then to add to our selection, you just hold down the shift key and control key. And as you can see, a plus appears and you can just select it. And let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to click once, double click, click, double click, click, double click. And then I'm just going to hold down the shift and control and add to my selection. So essentially, I just manually selected just the horns um, of my helmet because this is going to be like the metal piece and these are going to be kind of white bones sticking out right so let's go ahead and look at our viewport here and I would like to project them from the side so X I'm going to say apply and if we wanted to we can try to unfold but that actually doesn't work in this case I'm actually just going to scale them down and leave them as is just move them aside all right, that gives me these uh, leaves me with these metal pieces here. I can press W to move them out, and we can decide if we want to unfold them or not. Um, in my case, I actually don't need to. They're just going to be like a darker metal, and I don't really need to paint them um, at all. So I'm just going to leave them leave them as is. We could try to unfold them and see if maybe that's a little better. It's a matter of preference. All right, so one one thing I like to do is actually kind of move them apart a little bit so they're not touching. And in addition to unfolding, you can also try this button here sometimes called automatically move UVs for better texture space distribution. So if you click on that, uh, sometimes it could give you a better layout as well. So it just kind of moves the points around. In this case, it, it wasn't really necessary. So the last piece that we have is just like uh, this top piece. And again, we could do the same thing um, as we did here, just kind of unfold it. Or we could just leave it as is if you um, are not looking to paint individual things. We don't, each, each little circle, we don't really need to unfold it. If we wanted to, we could just do this. And that kind of gives a similar things um, similar layout as the other ones so maybe all right maybe we'll we'll go ahead and go with that so next 
once we're done unfolding everything, so I'm going to go into my object mode here, our job at this point is going to be packing all of these pieces that we unwrapped individually into this 0 to 1 space. Okay, so there is an automatic way of doing that where you could just if something is, if, if all of your pieces are white, that just means you have to activate your UV. So you can right click and go to UVs. You could see that made it blue means you're now in uh, edit mode. So if now if you select all of these guys, you could click on this button here called layout UVs. Now if I click on it, it just automatically packs them all in there and more, more times than not, it's actually a complete disaster, at least from my experience. So I actually don't want to use the automatic uh, tool. Let's go ahead and manually just kind of move them into space, right? It's uh, it's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is just kind of scale them in. So maybe uh, one of the things we could do is just kind of move them all closer together and attempt to create more of a square because right now they're they're not really forming a square and since we know we need to pack them in this area let's just kind of visually lay them out more 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 of a into kind of a square thing if we wanted to we can rotate some pieces pretty easily and we can also just manually move our shells around so just play around with it and, and get kind of the layout that you like We can move shapes closer together. If you're not sure about the scale factor, if you're not sure if some pieces are too large and some are too small, you can always turn this on, the checker tiles. When Once you turn them on, you kind of can see the distribution. You can also see the UVs that have been um, unfolded. For example, you could see the horn has stretching here, and that's because we projected it from the side right but we never really unfolded them so it's showing us that they're actually not being um, well unfolded right but that's that's fine because on my case it's just going to be white if you wanted to maybe do a better job you could just for example actually open them up so let's just for the sake of this tutorial let's just see what that would look like so for example if I go into like this guy here right I can take all these faces and then I can actually switch to an edge mode and if I draw out an edge maybe if I turn this off for a second it'll be easier to see but if you just actually manually select the edge where you would like to slice the shape we can actually cut it along these um, along this edge and actually unfold it just like a candy wrapper right so at this point with my edge selected I can go to polygons and do cut UV edges right so now this guy here has been cut right there so now if I unfold watch what happens you see you have a much different shape than you did here and now if you turn on your display checkered you could see that you don't have that stretching that you had before like here now again this depends on what kind of painting you want to do for your um, for your shape in my case it's completely not necessary because I was just planning on simply making them white so I actually don't need to do this I just wanted to show you guys alright I'm gonna control Z my way back to my original shape and again, just take a look and see if everything else looks pretty good. If it does, you're good to go. So now let's just grab all of these um, pieces. I'm just going to grab my select tool and just press W and kind of move them into position. Press R to scale them in. W to move. And let's just zoom in and see if we can... pack them in here a little a uh, little better so 
So at this point, it's just very quickly try to utilize all of your space so you don't have too much open space. And you want to stay away from the edges. Don't um, actually overlap the edges. It's kind of a important important to note. All right, so I'm just going to manually move these around. As you can see, it's pretty simple, and these tools are uh, very easy to use in the new uh, Maya. We can always scale things if we wanted to press R if something doesn't fit. All right, so I'm actually I'm fine with this. This is uh, this is pretty great. So that kind of takes care of uh, doing the UVs for this uh, shape. Next, we can always grab all of these and go to Polygon, do UV UV snapshot, and just kind of uh, decide where you want to save your UVs. I'm just going to call it UV and say save. And also let's decide what kind of uh, size map you want. Do you want 2K, 4K? Um, I'm just going to do a 1024, a 1K map, which is fine for uh, this low poly uh, shape. Image format, I would like mine to be in JPG. And of course, it's going to be the 0 to 1, right? All right, once you're done, just say OK. And now all we need to do is jump into Photoshop and do our uh, painting. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, I'm going to navigate to my uv.jpg file that I just saved and say open. And here it is. All right. Now, next, let's just quickly paint this. So I'm going to double click to unlock this and I'm going to call mine UV guide. All right, I'm going to create another layer and just put it underneath. And I usually like to set like a default color, like a dark gray for my base. And then just do, let's do like a screen so we could see our colors. And we can even turn this down to like 40%. All right, so now let's quickly just make some changes. So for example, these horns are going to be white. And you can spend as much time as you want painting this. And this could get pretty elaborate. You could use really advanced uh, painting techniques. And um, I actually don't want mine to be exactly white. How about just a little bit yellowish family? Um, I know that all of this stuff is going to be kind of silver. Maybe take all of these guys. And I'm not going to make you watch me uh, paint this stuff. I just want to show you kind of the basics. All right. So once you do your painting, let's uh, see how we can actually bring this in and set it up in, in Maya. So one of the things we need to do is obviously save this. So I'm going to save mine as texture.psd. So I have a nice layered version of my texture. And then once I did that, I can actually make a JPG version, which is just going to be a flat version of the same file and just say save. Now let's jump into Maya and in here, let's go ahead and select our object and go to shading and let's click on this uh, phone material to create kind of a default material for us. Then go to color, file, image, and let's navigate to our JPG file. So here's my JPG file. I'm going to say open. And as you can see, the uh, Photoshop file kind of kicks in right away. So now as you paint in Photoshop, you can see your uh, changes take place in Maya. And you can always press reload. So just paint your... Um, object as you like in Photoshop and then just simply reload the texture in, in Maya. 
Okay, so I literally spent 10 more seconds uh, in Photoshop. I just kind of turned, uh, changed all my gray to kind of a bluish uh, tint and just made like the top part a little uh, lighter. And then I came uh, here in Maya and just added more uh, subdivision. Now you can't just do mesh smooth because that's going to completely uh, destroy your detail. I actually wanted to bring this into Keyshot and create like a nice rendering image of this object. So for that, I um, actually just went into Edit Mesh and added and clicked on this button here, Add Divisions, right? So Add Divisions is nice because it will retain the shape and um, give you more detail, but it's not going to completely destroy the uh, curves of your model. And for this here, I actually just manually selected uh, just the white uh, horns and just did a mesh smooth on those. Right, so once I did all that, I could actually, I brought this into Keyshot and this is the image uh, I rendered out. So again, this is still low poly, but it looks really nice and I'm very happy with the uh, end result. All right, so you're welcome to do the same. You can render this out or actually just bring it right into a, a game engine and um, use it as a prop. Thanks for watching.